Summoner 2, the 2002 Volition game published by THQ, was released for the PlayStation 2 and later re-released for the GameCube in 2003. It was the follow-up to Summoner 1, an early entrant into the action RPG genre on the consoles. The Summoner franchise is mostly known for a short sketch of Summoner and Red Faction characters playing D&D in a popular skit that went viral, before going viral was even really a thing. Hey Graham, I'm not in the room, right? What room? I want to cast Magic Missile. The room where he's casting all these spells from! He hasn't cast anything yet! Besides that, the Summoner franchise has been mostly overlooked by most gamers. Unlike other pioneering action RPGs like Kingdom Hearts and Jade Empire, Summoner 2 has mostly been forgotten. But the question is, should it have been? In this review, we will discuss the nuts and bolts of what it is actually like to play Summoner 2, give some positives and negatives, and ultimately answer the question, does Summoner 2 deserve a more fitting place in the history of early action RPGs? I had come for the Book of the Prophets, stolen by a traitor from my sanctum. As we rode to the shores of the island, I swore to reclaim what was rightfully mine. First, let's discuss the audio in Summoner 2. Each map has its own distinctive audio track or two. They are themed to match the surroundings of the area. Nothing in the soundtrack sounds out of place or is particularly memorable. The music in each area is unique, however, so it never wears on you like it does in, say, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Graphics are another story. Simply put, the graphics are one of the weakest aspects about Summoner 2. This is not to say that the art direction is poor. Quite the contrary. The environments and the characters are all varied and intriguing. It's just that the actual graphical output is lacking. I'm using upscaled GameCube footage for this review, but trust me, when I was playing the PS2 version, it did not look like this. The overall performance of the game is fine. It never lags, loading times are manageable, but the visuals leave a lot to be desired. Okay, so what is it like to actually play Summoner 2? The game starts out like a scene straight out of God of War. Your ship is hit by a storm in the dead of night, and then pirates begin attacking. You and your crew must fend off the attackers, and you land on the shore of some tropical island. The majority of the game plays out like a mostly linear action title. You move to the end of the stage, killing enemies and clearing obstacles like locked doors using keys dropped by enemies as you go. At the end of each map, you may face a boss. Then you can fast travel to another map, where you can do more of the same. You play as Maya, the goddess reborn, and your palace in Halasar is a hub world of sorts, where you talk to your subjects, render royal judgments that have real consequences, and use your gold to upgrade the kingdom. It is hardly a castle sim, but there is some fun to be had when listening to petitions and having to make decisions in your throne room. It's almost like an early Fable 3. Besides this place, the only other hub-type city in the game is Munari City, a metropolis with its, with its own transit system that hands out tons of side quests and has a combat arena. The combat is in real time, with the action being paused to cast spells. More on that later. You have a light and heavy attack. You block, kick to break the enemy's guard, and you can use old school button combinations to unleash attacks unique to each character, like leech, which, you know, leeches health from the enemy. I find the button combinations to be inconvenient, since you have to memorize them for each character. It's no wonder this is phased out in other action RPGs like X-Men Legends, which uses a simpler system for character-specific special attacks. This is an RPG, so that means you can customize your character's weapons, individual pieces of armor, and skills. Changing your armor is both cosmetic and stat-based, so your character will look different with new armor. This is neat, but I didn't love having my big, burly, axe-wielding Torgus in pink for most of the game, just because of a small stat boost. That's why I think cosmetic changes should always be optional. Because you get players wondering if they want to be stronger or just look cooler. Leveling up boosts your stats and gives you skill points, which are used in a basic skill tree of sorts. I will say the skill tree has enough options to tailor your characters to your own playstyle, which is cool. Now let's talk about some of the shortcomings in Summoner 2. We've already mentioned the graphics, but we also need to talk about the item system. Consumable items, quest items, and spells are all accessed in the same way. You pause the game and pull up a menu that allows you to select an item or spell, as well as the intended target, if there is any. Potions, keys, and spells are all treated the same way. That means you need to walk up to the door, select the key, and then command your character to use the key to open the door. It seriously took me several minutes to open my first door while figuring this out. It's just so unintuitive. 
This is cumbersome, and you will be running around rooms attempting to use an item in the right location to trigger the advancement of a quest. Unused questing items will just sit in your inventory forever, further cluttering it, and making it even harder to find what you need. It is an awkward system that fortunately has not been replicated by future games. Speaking of unused questing items, yeah, we need to talk about side quests here. Yes, there are great side quests, such as the quest to find invisible monkeys that you catch by pressing a button after hearing an audio cue, letting you know that an invisible monkey is nearby. The quest ends with you releasing the monkeys into the wild, and then killing the poachers who captured them. The den the poachers use even winds up becoming the home of your cute little monster buddy you can see here in this video. Hey buddy, I love that little guy. This quest, however, is the exception, not the norm. Most quests are redundant, multi-step fetch quests. A typical quest goes like this. You talk to an NPC, get a quest item, use quest item to get a second quest item, use second quest item to get a third quest item that you can then use to complete the quest. If you miss one of the items in this process, the questing items you already have are useless. These items will just sit in your inventory forever. Also, the quests are so vague, you will have no idea how to complete them. Most quests require you to get a quest item, then fast travel to a new location to use the, that item. But you don't have much of a clue about where to go and when to go there. Yep, some of the quests are time-gated. Good luck figuring that out. Unless you're using some old walkthrough, you might as well just ignore most of these quests. Yes, the quests give you some good items, but you don't need them to beat the game. Good thing, because this game would be nearly unbeatable otherwise. Although the game is tough. The game presents a good challenge, which leads me to some of the game's strengths. There is no difficulty setting, yet the difficulty seems spot on mostly. There are some difficulty spikes towards the end, but for the most part it is challenging, yet appropriate. Another strength is the story. This story goes places. I'm not showing the late game footage for a reason. I don't want to spoil some of the truly weird and intriguing locations you visit. I just wish the graphics were capable of making these locales look as amazing as they seem. The characters are equally unique in backstory, character design, and combat style. For instance, Maya is a melee summoning medic, and that's your main character. Each character is unique in their own way, and the best part is that you get to play with all of them. All the characters are playable, and the game makes you use all of them in different combinations. There are several times in the story where it is a real team effort, and each of your characters are needed to complete certain sections. One mission stands out, where you control a siege tower that clears enemy defenses, dropping off squads as you go to secure key parts of the map. Usually you pick your favorite party members, and you ignore the rest in most RPGs, but not in this one. There's no need to worry about some of your party being underleveled either, as the game does a good job of distributing in-mission EXP to quickly get everyone caught up. The combat, while not perfect, is fast-paced and engaging. With an interesting fantasy world, great large-scale battles, good characters, progressive combat, and clever ways the game gets you to use your entire party, overall, Summoner 2 has a lot to praise. So what to ultimately say about Summoner 2? Is it an amazing action RPG experience that I've never had before? Well, in some ways yes, and in some ways no. Fortunately, some of the weirder, quirkier bits, like the awkward item system, I haven't seen before, likely because games saw it here and knew not to copy it. And some of the better action-oriented parts I have seen before, likely because games saw it here and knew to copy it. I can see that future games have obviously looked at this game and looked at what it accomplished and used it to build off of and to continue making great action RPGs for us that we all enjoy today. It's got tons of great action, weird, quirky characters that you actually get to play with and form a bond with, so that by the time the credits roll, you feel a, a kinship to these characters. You know them, you've used them all. And I think that emotional resonance is something that stands out here. Summoner 2 made a weird, fun fantasy world that is going to sit with me. And while it might have been forgotten by most gamers, it's certainly not forgotten by those of us who actually played it. If you get a chance, download it, grab a copy. I think you'll be surprised by what you find here. Well, if there's a sequel, I honestly don't know if I'm going to do it.